So we look at some concepts. That is, we look at what are combinators in CSS. So let me start off with this uh, simple web page. Uh, and inside this web page, I'm going to have a nav uh, element. So as I told you, nav element is used for putting up your navigational links. So let me create a navigational link here, a very simple link. So it's it's an when a link consists of some list items. So we'll create some list items here, and it's a link. So you should have an anchor tag for every list item. So let's have an anchor tag here. And uh, say I'll just link it to some test file, test.css. I'll call the very first thing home. Likewise, we can have many links. I'll just create uh, three links. Home, we'll say this is register on, and the final thing is about. So when you take a look at this, you have created a very simple list. It's a link actually, home, register, and about. <laughs> Now, we'll also have some more elements inside our uh, body. That is, we'll have some H1. This is a heading. This is heading one. And we'll also have a paragraph element. Let's generate some dummy text here. And we'll have another H1. So this is heading two. Like that. Okay. So this is what we have. Let me refresh the screen. You'll be able to see this. We have elements inside our body tag. That is, we have a nav element which is containing some links to other pages, and then we have an H1 followed by a paragraph, and then another H1 element. Now we'll see what are combinators in CSS. The very first combinator we are going to work with is descendant uh, selector. Combinators are nothing but selectors. So we'll see the very first thing that is descendant selectors. What are descendant selectors in CSS? It's just selecting elements that are descendants of another element. Say, if I want to select this particular list li, this is a descendant of ul, that is a descendant of this nav element. So how I can select this li is I have to give nav ul li. So inside the nav element, you have this ul. Inside this, you have this li. So when you talk about descendant selectors, it is nothing but space. Select all the ul elements within the nav section, within the nav element, and select all the li that falls within the ul. So this, you call that to be the descendant selector say i can select the uh, list of items and then i can give a color say text color is red something like this so now what happens it's not uh, li it's uh, let me select the anchor say we have defined the uh, anchor tags here so let me select the anchor tag and then let's give the color to be red so it's, uh, did I link up this page? This is the one common mistake I always do. So link test.css. Now let's uh, refresh this. So you're able to see the work of descendant selectors here. Anchor tag is part of list, which is descendant of UL and which is a descendant of NAV. So how these selectors are identified, you give a space so when I say UL space LI, LI is a descendant of UL. So this is how you can access elements using the descendant selector. Say, can we create uh, this menu? So we have a menu item here. How to make this menu uh, look better? So again, I'll go with NAV UL LI. So for this list, I don't want any list style type. I'll say it's none. We don't need a list style type. And we'll have a padding, padding of uh, five pixels or 10 pixels. And then we'll float the list to left. 
So let's see what happens to our list now. You can see well, there's a menu, home, register, about. We can also give uh, an hour effect on our list. How can you give an hour effect? We can say NAV, UL, LI on the anchor. Whenever user hours is cursor, give a background color to be some color. Let's say aqua is the color. So now what happens is you can very well see here when I refresh this, when I move my, it's hover, right? So it should be colon hover. So now when I refresh this and then when I move my cursor, you see there is a menu with an hour effect. So this example is all about descendant selectors. So while you are creating menus, you would have used descendant selectors. It represents a space. Now we'll see the next kind of selectors that is child selectors. The next selector we are going to see is child selectors. For understanding child selectors, let me make everything, the nav element and everything we add, let me put that inside a division. So everything comes under a division here. All the elements, the nav element, the H1, P and H1 comes under a division. So now I want to select, say, the division and all the paragraphs which are children of this division. So what is the child selector here? It is this symbol. And what we are selecting? All the paragraph elements, which is a child of this division. And what we'll do is we'll color the paragraphs, which is a child of div to be in red. Or let's give blue something different. So when you take a look at this, you'll see the paragraph, which is a child of division got selected and the color was applied blue. So what is it we understand here? Whenever you are using this notation, it means we are selecting the children of a certain type. Okay. This is what child selector, child selector in CSS. Is this clear? The next thing we'll see is adjacent sibling selector. Adjacent sibling selector. What do you mean by an adjacent sibling selector? Let's go back to our example. Say, paragraph we have this P followed by H1. So H1 is a sibling of P because these two elements, they have a common parent called the div element. So who are siblings? Those have a common parent. So here H1, P, H1, all these things come under division. That's a common parent. So I can say this paragraph and this H1, they are adjacent siblings. So now if I want to select this adjacent sibling H1, which immediately occurs after the paragraph and color it, how will I perform that? So it's like this, you, you select P, you select the immediate adjacent sibling to P, that is H1, and then you style it. Say I'll give color to be some brown. Now, you can very well see this is heading 2, which is actually, what is that? This is heading 2. This is an adjacent sibling to paragraph. Why we say it's an adjacent sibling? Because both of them have a common parent. So you can select the immediate adjacent sibling and style it using adjacent sibling selector, which is a plus sign. So if I have another sibling H1 below that paragraph, this is heading three. And uh, when I refresh this, what is that you see here? Which adjacent sibling is colored? Only that occurs adjacent to paragraph is colored. This H1 is not colored because this is not adjacent to paragraph. So what is adjacent sibling selector? Selects the immediate adjacent sibling of an element. If you want to color all the siblings that occur after paragraph, then we have to go with general sibling selector. So we'll see what is general sibling selector. General sibling selector. 
what is general sibling selector say adjacent sibling will only color the adjacent sibling general sibling is all the h1 elements after the paragraph element should be colored then i can go with something like this instead of uh, giving p plus h1 let me comment this let's go with adjacent sibling selectors here so now now what we'll do is p and then this is the uh, symbol for uh, adjacent sibling selector and then select all h1 elements after p and then you give the color as brown so what is that you are seeing here what is the difference between adjacent sibling and general sibling in adjacent sibling only the immediate adjacent sibling the style will be applied whereas in general sibling all the elements of type h1 that occur after p will be styled with that color so these are some of the selectors used in css this is a very important concept because when you look at uh, style sheets you will be able to see the use of these selectors extensively in the style sheets so that's about combinators in css